the Monogram Mompreneur. Welcome to my channel if you're new here. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a personalized baby beanie on your embroidery machine. It's super easy. I love making these as gifts and selling these in my Etsy shop. Um, they're always a good seller, so I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. You can do these on a multi-needle or a single needle. It doesn't matter. The way I'm going to show you will work for either. So let's get started. Okay, so this is just an example. For some reason, I thought this wasn't good enough for a customer. Um, back when I had my Etsy shop a while ago, I'm guessing it was this little spot here. I, I don't know. So anyways, I scrapped it, I did another one, so we're gonna practice on the back um, because I have reopened my Etsy shop and I wanna get some of my new fonts um, displayed. So I'm just gonna reuse this one and show you exactly how to do it. So um, as you can see, this does not have a knot on it. Um, this one is, that's what it looks like, undone. And typically I would embroider. This is from WeWears um, and the tag is in the back. So I would do the, the spot opposite the tag. So all we're going to do is I like to fold it up about, it's like an inch and a half. Um, I think that's a good height for these beanies and the size. And so we're just going to get started marking our center and putting it on the machine. So what you'll need is your sticky stabilizer. I'm going to use a fast frame so you could totally use a hoop for this method. And I'm going to use an extra piece of tearaway stabilizer. So now that I have the hat, I pressed it up so it would have a fold already kind of imprinted so that way I knew how far I could go down. Um, typically, I like to use a one inch or smaller font. Especially with when you are doing a knotted beanie like ALB blanks, um, I would recommend like a half an inch or 0.75 at the biggest because you're going to run into some space issues. So um, that's why I kind of prefer these little caps um, because you have a little more room to embroider. Um, so some it's like an inch to an inch and a half. Um, embroidery field right here. So typically I will just find my center, mark a purple dot where I'm going to go, and let's get the frame prepped. So you would do the same thing. You would just hoop your um, tearaway stabilizer and you're going to use the same method either way if you hoop it or if you float it. I'm using the Sulky Sticky Plus. I use Silky for my baby stuff and my t-shirts, um, and then I use the World Widener brand sticky for anything that is, um, doesn't really matter if the sticky comes off, if that makes sense. So when I was doing masks or any kind of in the hoop project, that um, doesn't really matter um, if the sticky comes off, does that make sense? Um, but the, this is super, kind of almost thinner, and it's a lot easier to come off. It's a little more expensive, though, as well. So I save it for my baby and my t-shirt items. All right, let's get it on the frame. So as you can see, I was doing a few orders, and I just like to patch it because... Stabilizer is expensive. And patch the hole. I might cut a little excess. Alright, so now we have our sticky. Okay. So I'm going to find my center. So that seems about good. Okay, so what we're going to do now, so here's the trick, and it gets a little tricky, so this is why I use a purple dot. We're going to take it, and we're going to turn it inside out. And so this is a sample, so typically I put the, um, I always have the tag in the back, but it's a sample, so I'm using both sides today. So we're going to take it, so it's inside out. But this little dot is showing us where we're going to embroider, okay? So we're going to take it. 
and place it on our fast frame and kind of just make sure it's even. Sometimes I put it down a little farther. Let's see if I can. Then we're gonna use our little clips. I always use these. So you, you're used to probably seeing them in my videos. Sometimes I will draw a line with my erasable marker just to give me kind of a line to stick it on, but I've been doing these lately, so I kind of have an idea. All right, so for a single needle machine, all you would do is the same technique, except you would just have it up like this on your hoop. See, it's stitching in the hole. So instead of, I mean, I might leave it like this, I don't know. So this is exactly how you would do it with the one needle, exactly how I'm doing it with the multi-needle. Um, I prefer to put mine underneath, that's just my preference because I feel like it keeps it from bunching, but no way, there's no wrong way um, to do it. Okay, so now we can kind of see right here on this line where the bottom of the fold is, so it gives us a reference of where our font should be. So let's put it on the machine. Okay. So I already have um, my name on there. I forgot to oil my machine, so let me do that real quick. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm not going to waste this whole sheet of tearaway. I'm going to cut it in half, and I'm kind of going to angle it. It's a little awkward in there. Um, so I'm going to take it and round it a little bit so it fits nicely. My thing, you don't have to do this, but just something I do. All right, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it and you're gonna place it inside. So in between where the needle plate would go and in between the frame, that's where this um, stabilizer is going. And see how it's a little big? I'm just gonna trim it so we have no bunching because you definitely don't want bunching. on the machine. Okay, so now I have my font set. I don't think you probably can see that. I'm going to move my laser up. This is why I love this machine and I don't know if I'll ever be able to have a machine without a laser because the simple fact right here, all I have to do is find my center dot. Okay, so I found my center dot, and I'm just going to do a trace to make sure when you're doing these hats, you want to trace, and I always like to do, um, go ahead and go do, like skip ahead a few stitches, because I don't know how many times I've ruined a hat by getting too high up, and then the font just like raising the edge. So you want to have some clearance in between the top, but you don't want it to be too far down, because then it'll look weird. So it's the perfect balance, especially when you have, like you'll see today, I have like a capital and then, um, um, you know, on the lines, the Y and the G have the hangy thingy. I'm not a teacher, I'm telling you. They go down, the capital's up, it creates a lot more space. So you need more space and your font, you need to take that into account. So let's try a trace to see if it fits. Okay, that seemed to fit well, but just in case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my sewing thing. I'm actually gonna switch my colors. They're not right on here, but I know what needle I'm going to, so I'm gonna switch to needle five. And then I'm gonna hit the little, it looks like a needle plus minus button, and I'm gonna go I'm going to follow my screen. It's, I'm going to turn my light down a little bit so you can see it. I'm going to follow my screen. You see how I'm at the very top of my capital letter? 
Okay, so that shows me exactly where I will be on my um, thing. So I feel like that's a pretty good clearance. So I'm gonna go back to zero. Okay. So again, I always check a few of the, the high stitches um, just to make sure, um, like I said, everyone, plenty of hats. So next what we're gonna do, so we have our tearaway stabilizer underneath. Forgot to mention, I use water soluble stabilizer. Some people don't. I prefer to use it. I think it gives it a more polished look, especially on um, baby items. They're a little, I don't know. I just used water soluble on everything. I think it looks better. Okay, so now we're just gonna stitch it out. Um, let's see, three minute stitch out. This is why I love selling baby beanies. They're quick, easy money. shut off on me my ran out of memory on my phone I film everything on my phone so you didn't get to see I guess the film went away where I peeled the baby beanie off um, the fast frame just be super careful when you're ripping the sticky stabilizer in the zero way off especially especially with um, this vintage font and I'm gonna go around and trim it up a little bit but that is what it looks like this font is um, by Jolson's, I believe it's like hand stitched, I'll link it below. And so for this little purple dot, a little tip is to get a white washcloth, um, get a little bit wet and just dab, dab, dab. It will get a brighter purple before it fades, so don't freak out. And then it will go away. And if you need to get the order out right away, what you'll do is you can just take a hair dryer and dry it and that'll work good. So there you go, that's how to embroider a baby beanie. These are always a top seller in my shop. Um, everyone needs a cute um, baby hat for those first pictures at the hospital. Um, they make great baby gifts. And I can't thank you enough for watching. Please make sure you hit subscribe if you're not already subscribed. We would love to have you here. I post lots of tips and tricks about embroidery, applique, and sublimation, as well as I'll be doing a lot of Etsy tips um, because, again, I just reopened my Etsy shop after a full year of vacation. Um, so it'll be fun to see how it goes, how many sales I get, my failures, my successes. So I can't wait to share that along with you. Well, until next time, thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.